in one hadith, amazing hadith, a stranger comes into the gathering of the Rasul. Rajulun shadidu bayad al-thiyab, shadidu sawad al-sha'ar, lam yura alayhi athar al-safar, wa lam ya'rifhu minna ahad. A man exclusively white, dark hair, no spot or sign of fatigue and travel. None of us know him. Mysterious man. He has come into the gathering of the Rasul and he sits with his knees touching the knees of the Prophet. And then he says, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu ala Muhammad, akhbirni anil Islam. Tell me about Islam. So the Prophet answered. And when the Prophet finished, the man said, Sadaq. You spoke the truth. So the Ashab says, we're astonished. He asks and confirms as though he knows the answer. So why are you asking? And then he says, anil iman. Tell me, O Muhammad, about Iman, the Rasul explained. And he says, Sadaqt, true. So then he said, anil ihsan. Tell me about Ihsan. The Prophet explained. The man said, correct. And then he asks, Tell me, O oh Muhammad, about the hour. So he said, The one you're asking doesn't know more than the one who was asking. The asked doesn't know more than the one asking. So then he says, Tell me its signs. So he says, and listen, listen, listen to the one who doesn't speak of his own desires. When a lady gives birth to her master, when a female servant gives birth to her master, and you want to see your masters today, look at your children. You live for them. Mobile phone, mom, hadir. This ala ra'si wa aini. And you do something wrong, khalas not speaking to you for today, ma'am. Amatu rabbataha. You have given birth to your masters. The Prophet said it for, it was unheard of then. They lived in servitude of their parents. When a woman is giving birth to her own master, now, when in the world could you imagine it could happen that children are treating their own parents like slaves? Yet, I was just in New York a few weeks ago at our new studios there, and I was amazed at the way the youth treat their parents. And then it hit me, that describes exactly Today, even when a child is in elementary, the primary school, they're already talking back to their parents, telling them things like, shut up, to their parents. What are you going to do about it? You can't make me. This attitude. And then as they get older as teens, get out of my face. And disappear. Don't come back for a couple days. And when they do come back, bad attitude. And then when they're maybe at the age of college or something like that. And I heard one say, I'm 18 years old now. I've had it with you. I have put up with you all my life. <laughs> this is a child talking to the mother. I've had it with you. Who carried the child inside of her? Who's the one that gave birth in pain after pain after pain? Who's the one that nursed that child? from her own breast, who is the one that taught the child to walk and talk, to have what even what we call the mother tongue, coming from the mother, teaching the child how to speak. And let's don't even get into the changing the diapers and staying up all night long. That sounds like slavery to me, what do you think? Although many of these scholars has interpreted this hadith as it's supposed to mean that a time will come that the children will treat their parents in a way that they become like master to their parents, this hadith could also refer to a phenomenon called surrogacy. Surrogacy is an arrangement often supported by an agreement, whereby a woman, meaning the surrogate mother, agrees to bear a child for another person or persons, who will then become the child's parents, 
after birth. A technique called in vitro fertilization now makes it possible to gather eggs from the mother, fertilize them with the sperm from the father and place the embryo into the uterus of a gestational surrogate. The surrogate then carries the baby until birth. She doesn't have any genetic ties to the child because it wasn't her egg that was used. Therefore, the surrogate is called the birth mother and not the biological mother. Usually women who are in a lower socioeconomic scale in society offer these services to wealthy individuals. A poor lady rents her womb to carry the baby until birth, where the newborn will become the master of the surrogate mother. And the surrogate mothers are being treated as slaves. Because firstly, in this arrangement, material compensation is offered for the physical service, which means a surrogate rents a part of her body in exchange for money. And secondly, in this arrangement, a deep personal or emotional relationship is not required for the transaction to be completed. Or in other words, there would be no value given to the feelings of the surrogate mother after birth, and she would have no right over the newborn. And then the second sign in Subhan al Khaliq, wa antara hufatan uratan alatan ria al shai yatata waluna fil bunyan. When you see the barely clothed, like they don't have good clothing, not adequate clothing, barefooted, destitute shepherds and goat herders competing in the heights of buildings. So I researched. Who is competing in the heights of buildings? Subhan al Khaliq. The tallest building on earth today, where is it? Dubai. I watched the footage of Sheikh Zaid. You know, ordinary simple clothing, he's wrestling with one of his workers. An ordinary shepherd, the oil camp, Pujur, skyrocketed. And now, the tallest building on earth is in their country. When the barefooted destitute will compete in the heights of buildings. So I said, maybe coincidence. A few years before that, the, twin the, uh, the clock tower of Mecca. And now the Saudis have thought, bless their hearts. How can they beat us? Let's make another one. The next building started yesterday. One kilometer in the air. Sadaq al Sadiq. His word is the sign. Who would have thought at the time where they used to build with pebbles houses that barely had roofs that they would compete in skyscrapers? Warabbul Kaaba, everything the man has uttered is true.